As many of you will know, after Elvis died, the records started coming out at an even faster rate than they had done when he was still alive. And in Japan, between September 1977 and November 1987, there were over 40 LPs released, even more if you count CD-only titles. And today we're going to be looking at the posthumous albums released in the 1970s. And starting with Moody Blue, which came out in September 77. And I've shown this album in a recent video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I just will point out here that the title on the obi in English is a little bit unusual. The title always appeared in Japanese on the obi, but to have it also in English was quite unusual. And this black second obi, you could also find this on certain other albums released in 1977 after he died. And it just basically reads Elvis forever with his birth date and his date of death at the bottom. The next one I have to show you is from the end of 1977. This is Elvis's Christmas album. This is the budget album version with Mama Like the Roses at the end. And the OB gives you the title in Japanese. It's actually called Blue Christmas in Japanese. And it also reads here, special limited edition, but in actual fact, it's quite an easy album to find. That's the back cover. And the price of that album, incidentally, was 1,500 yen, which compares to 2,500 for Moody Blue. So it was significantly cheaper. It wasn't on Camden, though. It was actually on RCA. And just like most Japanese records at that time, it came with an insert Japanese information on one side and then English lyrics on the other. Shortly after I started doing this channel, a viewer contacted me and asked me to show the Elvis in Concert Japanese album. And I said I would. And I must apologize for having taken so long to do so. And uh, I hope uh, that particular viewer is still watching. But here it is, Elvis in Concert, the 1977 version. And the cover is basically the same as in America. with the gatefold sleeve. And there's a lot more detail on the OB, a lot more information on the OB this time because there's a lot more information that you need to know. So in the red box here, it tells you that the concerts came from June 1977 and that they were included in the Elvis in Concert documentary, which was screened in October. October the 3rd in America. And it was released with these blue Elvis labels. This one came with a booklet instead of an insert. On the inside here, it has all the Song titles in Japanese and English. Japanese essay. In the middle, the essay continues with English lyrics. And it also has Japanese transcriptions of the spoken parts. And then again, on the back. The next album we got over here was He Walks Beside Me. And the OB design is very similar to the Elvis in Concert album. The blurb at the top here in the red box, this basically tells you what's on here, a collection of religious songs, and it also points out the two unreleased versions, Impossible Dream and If I Can Dream. And the back cover is the same as the American cover, and on the back of the OB it has a list of other Elvis records available at the time. On the orange RCA label and whereas in America they got a little photo booklet those photos were actually printed on an insert in Japan and this insert folds out and on the inside you get the same information that you would normally get 
on a Japanese insert with Japanese liner notes and the English lyrics. Now, for anyone tuning in hoping to see a Japanese copy of Elvis Sings for Children and Grown Ups 2, I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you because it was never released in Japan. However, they did release a Canadian tribute, which, to be honest, is not much of a better album, really. And the back cover is the same as the American version. It's a nice cover. This gold text here is embossed, just like it is in America and Canada. However, as I've said before, in Japan, they don't really go for colored vinyl. I think it's just because they associate it with inferior sound quality. So the album was released on black vinyl. They kept the nice picture label, of course. And the insert has the same photographs that came with the overseas version. And this one folds out. The Japanese information is actually very useful because it gives you all the recording dates and locations. And then on the other side, English lyrics. And it also has Japanese translations of the interviews as well. The next one was A Legendary Performer, Volume 3. And this one is basically the American picture disc with a Japanese obi over the top. So there's no Japanese liner notes at all. It just has the lyrics in English on the back and also a transcription of the interview. And the Japanese on the front is basically telling you the song titles, what's in the package. Gives you a lot of information actually. It tells you the recording dates and whether or not a song is unreleased or an unreleased take and so on. They were charging 3,000 yen for this particular release, which was 500 yen more than a standard LP. And there were just two more releases in the 1970s in Japan. This was the first one, uh, Memories of Elvis, Volume 1. Again, the back cover is the same as the one in America. However, the title was changed in Japanese, and you can see those big blue letters in the middle of the obi there. The title in Japanese is Pure Elvis. So it's very different to the American title, Our Memories of Elvis. I don't think this sort of sentimental title would have worked quite so well uh, with the Japanese market, uh, with the Japanese audience. And this obi is actually the widest obi that they ever made, along with volume two. And it's just basically because there's so much information to put on there. So all this blurb here on the left side is telling you that these are the basic versions without the added horns and strings. And then over on the left side, it gives you all the titles of the songs in Japanese. And the usual insert. And this album is on the orange RCA label. And that brings us to the last release of the 1970s, Pure Elvis Volume 2, otherwise known as Our Memories of Elvis Volume 2. And again, it's just the same as the American version. Once again, you have the very wide obi. And here it points out the inclusion of the eight minute version of Don't Think Twice It's All Right. And there's the title again, Pure Elvis, Volume 2. Once again, it's on the RCA label. And you get a nice insert here with all the recording information, all the recording data in Japanese. So it points out all the musicians and the titles and uh, when and where the songs were recorded. So those were the albums that came out in Japan in the two years after Elvis had died. What do you think of those albums? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Cheers.